The extraction of oil in the Caspian Sea, specifically in the Azeri, Chirag, and Guneshli oil fields, and the construction of the pipeline will cost $19 billion, making it the largest non-military public works project ever. really a process of elimination. When it was clear that, that Iran would not be available because of U.S. opposition, the U.S. also opposed a route which went through Russia because it would simply reinforce Russia's monopoly over export routes from the Caspian area. Um, then the alternative, you looked at Armenia, would be the most direct route um, to Turkey, uh, but Armenia because of the situation in Nagorno-Karabakh and the technical state of war between Azerbaijan and Armenia was not possible. And then you have Georgia in the middle, um, which had its own problems, but, uh, but that was the eventual route chosen, was um, uh, basically that the northern and southern options were not available, so they had to go west. In September 2001, Georgia and Azerbaijan signed a transit agreement that would allow the pipeline to be built. The chosen route originated in Baku, passed through the capital of Georgia, and then tailed off across the Turkish border towards the oil terminal at Jehan. It's been a, perhaps one of the most complex industrial projects ever undertaken anywhere in the world. Um, you're dealing with 1,760 kilometers of, through three countries. Uh, anytime you build a pipeline, the more countries it goes through, the more difficult it becomes. Georgia has suffered from numerous problems that would have made it an unlikely choice. Certainly, it was a very problematic country under the former government of uh, President Shevardnadze. Uh, you had a situation where the government was very unpopular. You had whole regions, um, Abkhazia, uh, South Ossetia, Javakheti in the south, uh, where the government basically did not have any uh, authority or control over its territory. It was deeply unpopular with the people. Uh, and yes, there were difficulties. There was uh, mafia activity and, and criminal activity in Georgia. Um, so at the time the decision was made, uh, some would say it was a very brave decision. Some would say, you know, it was a crazy decision given those circumstances of that time. The most direct Georgian route would have been southerly to the region of Ajara, ending in Batumi, a port town along the Turkish border on the Black Sea coast. But the Georgian government has had little control in the predominantly Armenian region of Javakheti, a region that the pipeline would have to pass through simply to get to Ajara. It had even less control in Batumi, where a highly autocratic dictator, Aslan Abashidze, ruled his own private autonomous economic free zone between 1990 and 2004, his power seemingly supported by locally based Russian military units. Successive Georgian governments have tried to rid their country of Russian military forces, but with little success. Russian bases still exist on Georgian territory in precisely the areas considered too risky to build a pipeline. Javakheti and Ajara. In fact, until President Abashidze's departure in 2004, armed Georgian federal troops had never set foot in Ajara. They were always turned away or disarmed by Abashidze's own military forces. In either of those areas, the Georgian government would have been unable to guarantee the pipeline's security. Tagiloni, on the way N27, 
Yankee Zero Tagiloni. In Tagiloni, I would like to visit the mayor of Tagiloni and the school director, the same place. After that, we'll combine, we'll conduct our patrol direct to Pirvilio Tobaya to visit checkpoint commander 207. And from Pirvilio Tobaya via Zulu Niner uh, Zemo Bargevi to Kumushkuri. I would like to meet the brigadier or maybe locals to, to check what is the situation in this village. Four seven four seven. This is hotel one. Leaving your location. Heading destination number five. Over. A northern Georgian route was also out. Since a war between Abkhaz separatists and the Georgian central government from 1992 to 1993, the tiny region has functioned outside the control of the Georgian state. Georgian officials estimate nearly 250,000 ethnic Georgians have been expelled from or fled Abkhazia since the war began. UN monitors patrol the de facto border along the Inguri River part of an international presence to bring stability to the region. But no substantial progress has been made and few Georgians have returned to the disputed territory. Have you seen last time uh, armed men, militia, Abkhaz militia, uh, traveling in this area? Uh, they visited this place two months ago. Two months ago. Two months ago. Yes, is the old information. Russian peacekeeping units also maintain positions along the disputed border, but have been implicated in deliberately destabilizing this region to justify their continued presence there. Russian peacekeepers have been seen as another way for Moscow to maintain its presence in Georgia and Russian influence in the South Caucasus. There seems to be no hope in sight for a political settlement in Abkhazia. While a ceasefire is technically in place, violence continues sporadically, threatening the stability in the region and scaring away any thought of a pipeline route through or near Abkhazia. The Russian-built Supsa pipeline is mere miles from the contended Abkhaz border dangerously close should open warfare resume. This leaves the middle route through Georgia, which goes through the capital of Tbilisi. The pipeline traversing Georgia represents a tremendous financial windfall of its own in transit fees. But ensuring local support in Georgia doesn't have a strong history, and pipeline security is critical to the success of the entire project. The issue which I would like to underline is that um, the local inhabitants uh, supports oil pipe uh, pipeline idea in Georgia very well. They understand the uh, importance of this project for Georgia economy, for Georgia state, and uh, I'm finding that there uh, we have to support them in these actions to uh, to keep our pipe safe. Yeah. There are about 450 villages along the entire pipeline route in the three countries. Um, and if you have proper relationships, good relationships with those communities, then they're really your best element and your best form of security. Because if they feel a sense of ownership, if they actually benefit from the pipeline, then they'll help protect the pipeline. And, and that is the most important part of security. Looking back to the signing of the contract of the century over a decade ago, it seems obvious that a pipeline would follow shortly after. However, with oil prices languishing during the better part of the 1990s, 
the seminal contract was only words on paper. What really made it happen is that the Turkish government agreed to build the Turkish section of the pipeline for a fixed sum of about $1.4 billion. Um, that basically opened up the commercial, commercial possibilities and led to the Western companies actually making the investment and beginning construction. Um, and that was political. Despite the pivotal role of the Turkish government in securing the pipeline, geographic efficiency was again subordinated to political necessity, as the pipeline takes a big loop to avoid southeast Turkey, which has witnessed the worst fighting between Turkish forces and the separatist Kurdistan Workers' Party, or PKK. If the most direct route had been chosen through Turkey, it would have taken it through the area where there was a long-term insurrection by uh, the Kurdish minority, uh, in which about 30,000 people were killed in the 1990s. When the fighting was at its most intense, the PKK identified oil pipelines as a legitimate military target. But the pipeline can't entirely avoid Kurdish areas, and it runs a risk by going through some in the northeast where the people were sympathetic to the PKK, but did not take part in the war with the Turkish government. The security and safety of the pipeline is, is clearly paramount. And in each of the three countries, the national security forces, certain security forces will be dedicated to the protection of the pipeline. Uh, in Turkey, the gendarme, which is paramilitary police, uh, special units of the gendarme are being formed to protect the pipeline. Uh, vaziyette. Türk Emniyeti'nin işte bu bir başarısından dolayı işte terör tamamen bitirilmiş bu halde. Bu bölgede güvenilir bir bakımda.